Next one. Can you turn it right side up? Okay. So what's this beauty? So you guys really notice the fact that there's a lot of inflammatory cells scattered about in this thing. It is a myxoid lesion, but lots of inflammatory cells, right? And that's, okay. yeah, so you can think of a low-grade myxofibrosarcoma or myxofibrosarcoma grade one. Um, you could also think about low-grade thyromyxoid, I suppose, because it's got pink and blue areas and kind of variable cellularity. The one thing I would say is that looking around this lesion, most of the cells, oh, that area is out of focus, I forgot. There's one, one part of this slide that didn't scan in focus. Let me find the area that did. I feel like most of the cytology of these cells is very bland. You got these nice little nuclei, they're pretty uniform. They've got some pink cytoplasm. A lot of them are spindled, although some of them, some of them look a little bit, a little bit kind of reedy form, like little bean-shaped nuclei. You can kind of vaguely appreciate it here, maybe, or here. But there are some that kind of have a bean-shaped look with a little blob of pink cytoplasm. And so that can be pretty helpful, I think. But I would, for myxofibrosarcoma, even grade one, there to me, there must be at least some pleomorphism. You've got to have at least a little bit of scattered, truly atypical cells to be able to recognize or, or to meet the diagnostic criteria for that tumor. So what I will tell you is that this is a hypocellular myxoid lesion. It's uh, here's the skin up top, right? It's kind of a circumscribed nodule or multi-nodular mass in the subcutis. We saw it as scattered inflammatory cells, particularly one cell I want to point out is it's got not just lymphocytes, but it has some scattered neutrophils in it. Uh, I think we saw them best in that top area. Scattered neutrophils in a myxoid tumor is a really useful clue, and I'll tell you in a minute what, what it means. Yeah, there we go. There's like some scattered neutrophils in the background, and that is an, an unusual thing. You know, neutrophils, I feel like neutrophils are only present like in derm path too. In certain things, like they usually mean something when they're somewhere. They don't just kind of hang about. Like lymphocytes, you can find them anywhere. They're like a dime a dozen. But I feel like neutrophils, they're usually there for like some sort of reason. I don't know why that is, but it seems like it. And then down here, there's sclerotic collagen probably related to this ruptured structure here. And what is this? What's that? This is an epidermal inclusion cyst. And here is actually like a hair a hair um, shaft right here. There's loose keratin. There's stratified squamous epithelium with a granular layer up top. So this is basically, and, and really what this is, is probably actually a, a dilated cystic hair follicle, but it did get entrapped in the middle of this tumor. So this was, a, this was a, and you know, the things we call epidermal inclusion cysts in the skin, they're actually really probably follicular cysts. Most of the cysts in the skin arise from various parts of the hair follicle. And then there are some rare ones that are of sweat gland or other derivation. But um, yeah, this is, um, oh, and I did a, rev a review on cysts and I got the whole thing online. Uh, if you guys want to watch it, I did it for my, my uh, intermediate level uh, resonance session here for my dermatology residents, and we went through a bunch of cysts, including some esoteric rare ones. So if you're looking for all you ever wanted about cysts, go check it out. Okay, so putting all this together, and then, oh look, there's vessels too. These kind of delicate vessels branching. So this is actually a cutaneous myxoma. And you might say, this looks totally different from like an intramuscular myxoma, and yes, that's true. The superficial, uh, I mean, sorry, cutaneous myxomas have another name superficial angiomyxoma. And I kind of like that name because it gets across the idea that in the skin, myxomas usually have a prominent branching kind of plexiform vasculature. It can look even kind of a little bit like the chicken wire vasculature of myxoid liposarcoma, although much less delicate. Myxoid liposarcoma has a very, very delicate vasculature. And these vessels actually have like a bit of a vessel wall to them. And you can see they're branching about. So we've got a hypocellular myxoid lesion. It's got bland spindled cells. Some, oh, there's a good one. Some of them, I hope that transmits across, have a bean-shaped nucleus with a little fat pot belly of pink cytoplasm. Yet another thing that Mark Edgar taught. See, he really liked to teach these funny little visual clues. And for some reason, the way his brain was wired is like, it totally is exactly every little pearl of what he said. Oh, this looks kind of like this. I was like, yes, that's exactly what it looks like. So I don't know. It's like we're kindred spirits, I think. 
And, um, and then cutaneous myxomas, in addition to having the branching vessels and, and this kind of cell right here, this little pot-bellied bean-shaped cell is very similar to the cytology you'd see in a deep myxoma like in the muscle, an intramuscular myxoma. But in intramuscular myxomas are usually less vascular. And the other thing that cutaneous myxomas have that's unique is they sometimes have scattered neutrophils in them. I do not know why. I don't know if anyone does. And it's not always there. I can't remember if it's 30 or 40 percent. But when you find it, it's a really helpful clue. So if I see a myxoid hypocellular tumor in the skin, uh, the first thing I do is, oh, are there any neutrophils? That can be a helpful clue. The other thing is about, I think about half of these will entrap in nexal structures. So you can get cystic hair follicles with keratin lining. I've also seen ones with entrapped sweat ducts, sweat glands, and they often, because they get trapped, they fill up with sweat and they get cystically dilated and distorted. So I've seen those. So entrapment of adnexal skin structures is a useful clue for myxoma. They also tend to be multi-lobulated like this. And um, I think those are all nice features. And this one does have a little bit more sclerotic collagen than usual. And I think that that's partly due to the rupture of the cyst. And so superficial angiomyxoma, AKA cutaneous myxoma. And um, there's a syndrome that sometimes has these. And what is that? Yeah, carny complex um, can, have, um, uh, can have a cutaneous myxomas and a variety of other things that you can go look up. It's a long list. But the, the majority of times I've seen cutaneous myxomas, they've just, to my knowledge, been solitary and, and sporadic. The times that particularly, which is kind of interesting, but particularly the people that have carnies, they get cardiac myxomas. And then also when they get cutaneous myxomas, they, they have a tendency to get them on the eyelid, near the ear, or on the nipple. So in those locations, if I see a myxoma there, it might not hurt to just put that on the clinician's radar to like, hey, you know, Sometimes the uh, Carney syndrome has myxomas in these locations and may not hurt to do some more workup just to make sure they don't have any, you know, other um, signs or symptoms to suggest Carneys. Um, and they do, they do have a decent tendency to recur. They are benign, but about, I think something like half of them can grow back. So they, so local recurrence is not uncommon, but I feel like if the majority of the lesions excise, it's fair to just watch full weight. And, and if it grows back, then you can take it out then because they are benign. So nice example of cutaneous myxoma. Any other questions? Yeah, that, okay, great point. That The one uh, entity that really does sometimes come up in the differential, especially on a small superficial biopsy, is uh, how do you tell myxoma from focal cutaneous mucinosis or focal dermal mucinosis? Usually those are smaller and centered in the dermis, but I've definitely had times, particularly on a partial biopsy, where I couldn't be sure. The good news is they're both benign, but again, th I mean, that lesion is just a deposit of mucin or myxoid material in the dermis and really doesn't have any risk of recurrence or anything to my knowledge. Um, but these sometimes do recur and have sometimes a syndromic association. So the things that help me is if it's, if it's multilobular, if it has um, got prominent vasculature, if there's scattered neutrophils, um, although sometimes if it's in the dermis, if it's ulcerated on top, you're going to have neutrophils because of an ulcer. So so you, I definitely had times where I wasn't sure, and I've actually described it as a hypocellular myxoid process and that it could be dermal mucinosis or a myxoma. And the, you know, the main thing on a superficial biopsy in the skin of a myxoid lesion, the main thing I wanna make sure is that I'm not getting the top of a large deep lesion that could really be something else more serious. Particularly, I worry about that in the setting of old people on the extremities where myxofibrosarcoma is most commonly found. And the surface of a myxofibrosarcoma in the dermis, they can be very hypocellular and have bland areas. And on a partial biopsy, um, they could be pretty tricky. And I had one not long ago, actually, that I diagnosed as a punch biopsy, and they were concerned it was a big basal cell or a DFSP. It, you know, it didn't look like classic myxofibrosarcoma clinically. And I just got a punch biopsy, which thankfully had very obvious atypia and was definitive. But it's certainly, um, uh, if you, you know, hypocellular myxoid things that are partial biopsy of a large deep lesion, um, more workup or maybe complete excision might be needed depending on the scenario. So, yeah, it's a good, good point. All right, I'm editing this and adding in um, after the fact. Uh, this is my little uh, uh, triad of questions for uh, intramuscular myxoma. Looking, is it hypocellular? Is it hypovascular? And does it have bland nuclei? Um, if yes, then it could be a myxoma, but if not, consider other options. And um, like I said previously, cutaneous myxomas, aka superficial angiomyxoma, actually have um, actually have prominent vessels. 
And here's just a quick look at an intramuscular myxome. You can see it splaying apart the skeletal muscle bundles there, the, the skeletal muscle fibers, and it's very hypocellular. And then here's that cell I was talking about. You can see them both in intramuscular myxoma and also in superficial um, angiomyxoma or cutaneous myxoma. You have this bean-shaped nucleus with a little blob of pink cytoplasm. And that's the belly, the little fat pot belly um, that Mark Edgar taught me about. And I think it's a really uh, cute name for these, uh, these little uh, pot belly bean-shaped cells that you tend to see both in cutaneous and in intramuscular myxomas. So that's the cell I was pointing out.